Hello there. Do you have a business analyst interview coming up shortly? If so, this is the video for you. As you know, a key responsibility or a skill for a business analyst is to elicit, document and maintain requirements. And this video is going to help you to discover the top nine commonly asked questions in business analyst interviews on requirements so that you are well prepared. To make it easier for grasping the concepts in the answers, we're going to use a case study. In this case study, uh, a movie theater chain called XYZ Cinemas is looking to build a digital channel for allowing the customers to book their movie tickets online rather than uh, calling up the customer care or standing in the long queues and book getting their tickets at the ticket counter. So we are going to use this uh, uh, example case study for uh, answering all the questions. Question number one, how do you define a requirement? As per Babock version three, a requirement is defined as a usable representation of a need. To simply put, a requirement is a articulation of a business need for solving a problem or capitalizing on a business opportunity. This representation is actually required for the engineering team to develop the solution accordingly to meet the business need. I've listed few few of the examples here. So these are different types of requirements which we'll be covering in this uh, video. Uh, I just listed it here to give you a view of the requirements. So number one, sales department needs a digital channel for allowing customer customers to book their movie tickets online. Basically, it's expanding on the case study. And the system shall display the available seats for a movie show. Systems shall allow the customer, customers to select the available seats. A system should respond within two seconds of a user's input. A customer can book a maximum of 10 tickets at one time. So these are all different statements. As, you, as I was st stating earlier, these are, all, these are all different types of requirements which we'll be covering shortly. The nature of the representation may be a document or set of documents and it uh, varies depending on the circumstances and the methodology used in developing a solution. We're going to cover this in question number nine, so stay tuned. Question number two. What is the difference between a business and a functional requirement? This is one of the tricky questions which is asked in the interview. I'll try to simplify it using the below two tables. First off, business requirement. Business requirements are basically representation of a business need, goal, objective, or outcomes. It represents the what. Example. Sales department needs a digital channel for allowing customers to book their movie tickets. It's very high level and it just uh, represents what is required by the sales department. It doesn't give guidance on how it can be achieved. It just represents the what. Functional requirements on the other side, they describe what a system must do to achieve the business requirements. It represents the how. Example, the system shall display the available seats for a movie show. The system shall allow the customers to select the available seat. Ideally, it talks more on how to meet the business requirement and you can see it kind of ties back into the business requirement Question number three, what is a non-functional requirement? So this is this question can be asked as a standalone question or it can be also stated as, can you tell the difference between a functional and a non-functional requirement? So we're going to cover that in this slide. Non-functional requirement is a quality requirement or a constraint to the solution. So it covers the following aspects. So first one is performance. So what should be the response time uh, for a system to respond to a user's input. So that is captured as part of a non-functional requirement related to performance. 
Second one would be security. How secure the system or the solution should be. Third one would be the reliability. So there are a few applications or systems which should be up all the time. So it can, we can state that the system should be available 99% of the time. So this would be a reliability uh, non-functional requirement which can be captured. Then the next one would be usability. How uh, it, how easy it is for the users to use the system or the solution which we're developing. The next one would be maintainability. How easy it can to maintain this solution. And on the last one would be related to portability. So these are some few aspects which we are going to document uh, as part of as a non uh, NFR, uh, which is non-functional requirements for the solution which is being developed. So let's uh, look at an example. The system should respond within two seconds of a user's input. So which is a performance uh, NFR. So as we discussed uh, in the previous uh, slide regarding the functional requirement for the system to display the uh, available uh, seats. So if you try to put it together, so a customer should be able to click on a movie show and within two seconds, the system should show them with a list of available seats. So that's how we are you know, tying it together to have a, a great customer experience. Question number four, what is a business rule? This is a question where most of the people get it wrong. Uh, so let me try to simplify this. Uh, as per B Babock version three, a business rule is a specific testable directive that serves as a criterion for guiding behavior, shaping judgments, or making decisions. That's a little complex uh, definition, but to simply put, a business rule is a criterion or a constraint which has to be followed by the solution or the system which we are building. So for example, the XYZ cinemas, they had a business rule that a customer can book only up to a maximum of 10 tickets at a single time while calling up the customer care or standing in the uh, uh, line at the ticket counter. So this ensured that you know there are plenty of tickets available for everyone. So the, this business rule has to be taken into consideration while uh, developing this digital uh, solution, digital channel. So this gives rise to a functional requirement for restricting the number of seats which a customer can book at a single point of time. So for example, it can be stated as such, uh, like this, the functional requirement that the system should not allow the customers to select more than 10 available seats. So this is a restriction which we are capturing as part of uh, a functional requirement, which, which was basically derived, uh, sorry, derived from a business rule. Question number five, what are the requirement elicitation techniques you have used in the past? I can bet you 100% that this question will be asked in each and every business analyst interview. The reason, as I stated earlier, elicitating requirement is one of the key skill and key responsibility of a BA and the interviewer would definitely love to hear how well you have done it in the past and also what are the different techniques which you have used. I've listed most of the commonly used techniques in this slide and we're going to cover uh, them one by one. The first one is the workshop. This is one of the highly recommended technique for gathering high quality requirements in a short span of time. I've already made a video on how to run a successful workshop and gather uh, requirements in less than one session. You can check out in the link below in the description link below. So uh, taking example of XYZ cinemas, if you want to uh, perform a, you know, capture requirement using workshop technique, then you have to invite all the key people or SMEs from the sales department, you know, customer care department, uh, ticket counter finance. So all the key people from different uh, departments who are involved uh, in this particular digital solution. So you can get everyone into a single session uh, in a room. It can be few hours or even it can be a day. If they are spread across, uh, it can be done via video conferencing or web conferencing. So you have all the participants and you can get the requirements uh, and their views on how the digital solution would be uh, and it can be captured and you know for further uh, solution development. 
second one is the int, uh, inter, interview technique so in case if you're not able to get all these uh, 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 different people from different departments at a single session then you can schedule separate interview sessions with each of them and uh, try to uh, gather the requirements which they need from this digital solution so it can be done on an individual basis uh, and if that two or more people uh, available it can be done as a group interview as well so again this is also one of the commonly used technique for capturing a uh, requirement or eliciting requirements the third one would be observation uh, it can be pa passive or active so observation if you take an example uh, you can walk down to the ticket counter and and you can see how the uh, staff is uh, getting the request from the customer and uh, issuing the tickets like um, it can show which seats they want uh, how the customer select so all these things can be observed and it can be translated uh, as a requirement for the digital channel to kind of mimic this uh, process so there are, as I stated there are two types of pa uh, uh, tech, uh, observation passive and active passive is you just stand there and observe and try to gather as much information or requirements and active as you stand there observe but you, now you can ask question to the staff who is issuing the tickets or who is doing it's like why are you doing it this way is there a reason you know it, it provides more insight and it can be kind of uh, translated to the requirements for the digital channel the fourth one would be the document analysis so this can be um, the documents which are available on the process it can be the procedures it can be the the business rule so the business rule which we kind of spoke about in the previous question would be uh, uh, you know would be found out from this document analysis technique and it can be translated to a functional requirement the next one would be the focus groups and the brainstorming they're more similar to workshops and it, it's again uh, done in a similar way brainstorming is more of uh, taking one uh, item and trying to get the ideas and the views from uh, people and kind of ranking it them uh, and again translating into requirements and also the priority priority of them the, the next one would be the process analysis so the process analysis is um, looking at the uh, looking at the end-to-end -end process if it's already one if it's already there if not creating one and then meeting up with the stakeholder and uh, showing them okay this is the process flow what all the uh, things you need from a digital solution which you are building okay so this is also a good way of uh, capturing the requirements looking at the end-to-end -end, uh, process so you don't miss out on anything the next one would be prototyping again if let's say if you want to look at the detailing of the digital solution you can do a mock-up of the screen navigation flow and then you can walk up to the stakeholders and ask them okay in the screen what all the elements do you need uh, is this better or do you need a different color to kind of sync up with your brand so all those detailing uh, can be achieved uh, using the prototype uh, technique the last one would be survey or questionnaire this is again uh, used only if you want to collect uh, the response from a huge number of uh, stakeholders for example uh, th uh, if you want to uh, get a view of uh, which of a feature would be beneficial for the customer so you can just uh, draft few of the questions and send it across to the entire uh, uh, sales department or customer care department and then they can select the options and then you can get it back and that can be used uh, for framing the requirements and also prioritization so these are some uh, few uh, techniques which I've covered definitely this is a question which would be uh, coming up so this can be used uh, uh, by you know you can answer these questions by using some experience from your uh, previous projects and question number six what is the difference between verification and validation of a requirement another tricky question so verification refers to ensuring that the requirement meets the quality standards that is whether the requirement is clear is it consistent with other requirements there's no contradiction whether the requirement is complete whether it is testable whether it is unambiguous and also whether it's understandable to all the stakeholders involved the development team the testing team so it ensures that the the quality of the requirement uh, is is good enough for the uh, the engineering team to proceed with it 
Validation, on the other hand, refers to whether the requirement is kind of aligned to the business need, goal, or outcome, and whether it really supports the needed value. So let's say in our example, if we take a requirement which uh, talks about allowing the customers to book refreshments uh, over a digital channel, it's a good requirement, and you know it uh, it kind of uh, I you know, satisfy the verification criteria, but uh, whether is it aligned to the the business need or the goal uh, of uh, a digital channel to allow customers to book tickets? You now it's a good feature, but it's not really aligned to that particular high-level business requirement. Hence, uh, you know, when the validation process takes place, this kind of requirement is uh, termed as low priority and can be revisited once the the key requirements are, are delivered. Question number seven, what is RTM or requirement traceability matrix? So this is one of an important uh, tool or technique which is used uh, to trace requirements. So this provides backward and forward traceability as shown in this diagram, and it helps faster impact analysis and reliable assessment. Uh, to ensure that all the business requirements are covered. So if you look at this example, uh, uh, RTM or requirement traceability matrix, so the business requirement uh, will be mapped to the stakeholder requirements, uh, stakeholder requirement one and two. So in our example, if you if you talk about the digital channel for allowing customers to book uh, tickets, the stakeholder requirement Number one can be related to the customer facing uh, screens and how they can, how it allows. And the other stakeholders who can be involved would be the back end team or the back, -end, back office operations team and what are the requirements from their side to process the customer's online booking. So that's how uh, the different stakeholders will have a different set of requirements. So the first level of mapping would be with respect to the business requirement and the stakeholder requirements. And then the stakeholder requirements would be mapped to the functional requirements and also the non-functional requirements, which we spoke about. And then the functional requirements and non-functional requirements in turn would be mapped to the design component. Okay, in order to de uh, deliver this uh, functional requirement, what are the design components required? So if you take an example of the screen, uh, to uh, show the customers uh, the list of available seats. So the design would involve uh, different screens and also the the, the logic for uh, sh uh, showing up the available seats. So, so that, that, that all comes under the design and then the design component maps to the, the code. So in which a particular uh, language the the code, the code is there, it may be Java, .NET, or it can be uh, uh, any other new technologies like Python. So all of this uh, uh, programming comes under the code and it is mapped to the uh, design component. And once the code is kind of completed and then it maps to the test case. Uh, so the test case would ensure that um, the code uh, which is developed works accordingly to the requirement. So this kind of uh, gives an end-to-end ma uh, uh, mapping uh, uh, to ensure that a business requirement is kind of de uh, test, uh, uh, developed and tested. So it's a very useful tool and this is one of the key things which also uh, used on a day-to-day -day basis and it can be asked in an interview. Moving on, question number eight. What are the techniques used for requirement prioritization? So this is also another key skill for a BA, how um, you know, he or she is able to negotiate and uh, get the requirements prioritized and uh, supplied to the uh, engineering team. Uh, as you know, there would be always limited time and limited budget and we have to get the uh, requirements with the highest benefits uh, through the gate first so that it can be uh, developed and delivered. So I've listed three uh, techniques here in this video which can be uh, used and uh, which can be spoken about in the interview. So the first one would be Moscow which stands for must, should, could and would. So ideally uh, if you are 
as I stated in the example, if you have a list of requirements, uh, you should set up a prioritization call with the business and then kind of uh, list the priority for each of the requirements. So the must is the list of requirements which has to be delivered in a particular release. So these are your top priority requirements and should is it, it, it is also high priority. But again, uh, there are uh, workarounds in place and it can be kind of deferred to the you know, it can be a lower priority. The first one would be the must and second one should be the should and the could and the would are like uh, good to have requirements. Um, if it can be delivered in this release or uh, sprint, it's great. Otherwise, it can be moved to the the subsequent uh, releases. Going on to the next technique, uh, which is called ranking. So there were several scenarios where the business comes up and tells you know what out of 10 I have seven these are should be the must requirements then the problem again um, you know if you go back to IT or the engineering team they would come back and tell you know what we need priorities among these must so that is where this ranking technique comes into play so again we can go back to the business and okay I understand all the seven are must could you rank the requirements based on the highest priority so then you can put the subsequent number from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this kind of gives a priority of those requirements for the engineering team or the IT team to kind of uh, 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 design and develop them and uh, deliver the uh, requirements with highest business value. The last one uh, is called Cano analysis. So this is more of used in a product based environment where there is a product being uh, developed. So the prioritization here uh, is the requirements are divided into three categories, basic performance and excitement factors. So basic factors are the ones which if you do not deliver that in a product, then the customer would not be happy at all. And then the performance factors are the key features which are in a product which will really, uh, you know, uh, get the customers to use the product. And excitement are the ones which are like the wow factor, which will draw the audience or the, so the customers to use the particular product. So again, similar principle, the requirements are listed and then it, they're classified into basic performance and excitement. So one of the uh, excitement factor which I can talk about in our example of the cinemas is would be a feature for the customer to order a refreshment and it uh, to be delivered to their uh, respective seat at the time of their choosing you now beginning uh, at the middle of the movie or somewhere close to um, uh, 30 or 40 minutes close to the end. So this feature would be a definite like an excitement for the customers oh my god you know you can just sit there and you know order it so that's how that's called an excitement uh, factor so these are some basic uh, prioritization techniques uh, which is currently used all over the world and also you, which you can speak to uh, in your interview question number nine what are the different documents you have prepared for capturing requirements so this is the one of the question which I mentioned in the first uh, slide, which we will be talking about the different documents uh, for capturing the requirements. So this is also another short, short question, which is going to be asked in the inter uh, in the interview process as uh, the interviewer would like to know how we have documented the requirements. So there are different uh, documents which are used in various companies, uh, but the uh, but the common ones I've listed down here. So the first one would be the business requirement document or the BRD. So this is a, a document which kind of provides context and uh, it's used to capture the business requirements and also the stakeholder requirements. So it's going to be a very high level document which specifically talks about the business need. The next uh, document would be the FRDs, the functional requirement document. So this document is used to document the functional and uh, non-functional uh, requirements uh, which are derived from the uh, the business requirements. The next one would be the use case document. So this document is to document the different use cases. So the use cases are uh, kind of like different scenarios which 
the solution or the system which which uh, we are building should support in order to uh, satisfy the, the the business and the functional requirements so this kind of provides more uh, air contacts to the uh, the engineering team on how the solution should work and which will help them to develop it accordingly the next uh, one would be the activity diagrams so this is uh, basically a, a document at the uh, of a flow of events diagram so this kind of uh, documents the interaction between the user and the system so it, it provides more guidance again and more context to the engineering team to develop the solution accordingly so it kind of tells if this if the user does this how should their system respond to so one of the example is that 10 uh, case uh, tickets so there's a functional requirement which we spoke about that a system should should not allow a, a user to book more than 10 tickets so if it happens the activity diagram would kind of uh, provide more context okay if it happens an error message should be thrown to the uh, customer asking them they can only book up to 10 uh, tickets at one time the next one would be the wireframes so the wireframes uh, ideally are the screen mockups uh, how a screen should look what are the features or what are the buttons or the different color uh, palette of that particular screen so all of this can be mocked up and it can be presented in a document for the engineering team to build accordingly the last one would be uh, the epic and user stories so this is kind of uh, the uh, way of documenting the requirements in the agile methodology so all of the ones which I spoke about above are more of a waterfall model and now uh, all the teams which have been using agile all the requirements are documented in form of epic user stories and all the supporting documents like activity diagram wire frame and use cases are all attached as a uh, attachment to the user stories and epics itself so for the engineering team to consider and uh, develop accordingly so these are the list of uh, key documents uh, for capturing the requirements wow that covers it that's a long video uh, but I believe it was informative enough and which will help you in your next business analyst interview if you have enjoyed this video please go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now uh, we post a, a video every single week on uh, business analysis tools techniques uh, interview prep and also tutorials uh, also don't uh, forget to download the business analyst interview questions and answer guide which is uh, provided as a link in the description box below so until the next video um, uh, take care and we will see you next week thank you